And I want to start firstly by just offering my condolences, support and araha, heartfelt feelings to those who have been affected, some of them in, in the most severe manner uh, by the weather event, the flood in on uh, Friday afternoon, evening in Auckland and, and the bad weather that's continued. People have lost their lives, people have lost their homes and gosh, a lot of businesses, a lot of pets missing, a lot of disruption and what should I, I guess have been a nice bonus day off for the people of Auckland today is anything but. It is a day to clean up and to count the costs of a pretty freakish uh, weather event. Uh, just talking to Kelly, who does keep an eye for some reason on road stuff and weather and things. Um, and I was amazed there were no warnings. You know, how often do we get from a weather forecast as a severe weather warning and more often than not we have a grizzle when it's not as bad as they say it is. This seemed to come out of nowhere. And from what I can gather... Um, it was a stalled front. It was a pretty standard front, but it somehow, uh, because of the weather pattern, got stuck where it did, and the deluge was enormous. Now, I do not know, and I haven't seen anything reliable about whether or not there was a failure of stormwater systems or drainage or anything else, but just more water than Auckland City in particular could handle, and the chaos ensued. I've always thought as a journalist, in those situations, you just are trying to get out as much information if you're that sort of news organisation. I'll be honest, the platform isn't. We leave that to others. Uh, you try and get the most timely, accurate information uh, that you can that is useful to people in a stressed situation. You try and issue them warnings accurate warnings, accurate instructions from authorities and believe it or not we do have or the media should have in that situation a responsibility and feel a responsibility to be team players and try and keep people calm. Calm and rational as they deal with emergency and crisis. Well, we saw anything but from the collective news media of Auckland. And if it was the infrastructure that failed to hold back the waters, it was the fourth estate that failed to do its job on Friday and over the weekend. It's ironic, isn't it? We have just come through a week where mainstream media have been crying foul over the supposed hounding of a Prime Minister from office by misogynists and political opponents. The hounding of a Prime Minister by social media pylons and name-calling and PISSS taking and the media, the mainstream media, have been outraged that poor Jacinda Ardern suffered so terribly. Yet what do they do as the rain comes down in Auckland? They round on the Mayor of Auckland, Wayne Brown, and launch and are the cheerleaders for a pile-on against him. In the midst of the crisis, Simon Wilson takes time out, writer for The Herald, one of the true lefties of New Zealand journalism, simply to lambast, to lambast um, Wayne Brown. A press conference is held not to gather information, but to stick it up the Mayor of Auckland. I've got no brief for Wayne Brown. I met the guy for the first time on Wednesday night and had a beer with him. The only interview I've done with him on the platform was during the campaign and it didn't go particularly well. Michael Laws has had him on the programme. But in that situation, you're a brand new Mayor of the biggest new, the super city, the biggest city in the country. And all you're getting from the media is a pile-on. A pile-on also continued on Twitter. And on Twitter over the weekend, Wayne Brown and Mayor were the top trends most of the weekend, and most of it was negative. From the very lefty trolls, liberals, um, who were bemoaning, bemoaning and beatifying Jacinda Ardern for being the victim of this sort of a pile-on. Probably the worst example I saw, and excuse me, Cam Wallace, because we know each other, 
But Cam Wallace, who is the head of Media Works, one of the country's biggest news organisations, Cam Wallace comes out, and I'm not going to bother reading him, with a snarky little tweet. Now, Cam Wallace, I'm going to explain something to you about running a media organisation, mate. I, because I am the editor, I'm an active broadcaster, am involved in setting the editorial tone, and we try at the platform. We're controversial, but we're unbiased and we're fair, and we don't engage in petty kicking of people in public office. But Cam Wallace, you have just, by your childish tweet, given every one of your talkback hosts and journalists permission to declare open season on the current Mayor of Auckland. Ridiculous and unprofessional. Everyone's screaming that Afiso Collins should be Mayor. Well, he's not. He lost the election. Wayne Brown is. And yes, he's got a different media style that could do with a bit of work. But I don't have any doubt that this guy is doing his best. And you know where I come from, how I was brought up? If someone had a tough job and they were struggling at it, you know what you do? You help them out. You give them a hand, because that's the way Kiwis work. All right, that's... Well, we're going to be talking to Morris Williamson about this later. I'm really interested in your texts on this. And I might also add, for many, many New Zealanders who don't live in Auckland and, and aren't on Twitter and aren't inside this bitchy political beltway we've covered, I know that most of you miss this and it doesn't matter to you. You were getting on with your lives, and I'm sure your thoughts... Uh, go out to the people of Auckland.